So a repeat. Yeah, Google Frog Activate versus Dying Train Kane. Let's see how this works. Another best of three, but I don't know how confident I am here. But hey, who knows? That's what this that's why it's a double elimination tournament, because there is a possibility. Dying Friend and Kane, if they have something in mind, if they've learned something from the last time they fought against Google Frog and Aquanim, then they might be able to. And hey, they still got third place, at least. I mean my prediction is still true. They got third place. But yeah, we are gonna be watching Losers now it's Losers Finals. Losers Finals. This is going to be map is on. Game one, which will be on something. Living Lands. Oh, I was looking forward to this one. I have not seen this map. Apparently it's based off of Deadlands, which which I've always had a bit of a love-hate relationship with. I thought it was kind of a neat design, but the center cake design thing doesn't really do it any favors. However, Apparently, Living Lands makes this work nicely. Let's see how this works out. I am very curious. Yeah, apparently there are two versions of Living Lands. Yeah, we're on version 203, but I don't really care about writing that down in the title text because that's not where I write down version numbers. That's in the description of the video on YouTube. So sorry, Twitch viewers, but it's on YouTube. And what? Side starts? Shouldn't it be corner starts? Yeah, this seems wrong. It was really weird. Was that set up? My guess is boxes aren't set up for this map. Nope! No, they are not! Okay, that's kind of weird they aren't set up. I, is this map not featured? Weird. Alright, we are good. So as soon as oh Cannon Dying Front are in, as soon as Google Frog downloads, then we are We're good to go. Alright, let's start up and Yeah, Living Lands, I'm really curious about. It. I wanna see this map. I'm so excited. Looked at the map list last night before going to bed, because yeah, I woke up at about two, I went to bed at like seven. And oh yeah, Dancer pointing out if I use I use Mumble. Yes, I do use Mumble. Sometimes. I try to use Skype if I'm co commentating though. Just I mean, I find that the audio quality a bit better. Okay, so this is Living Lands, revealing Living Lands, and this map is also cake, but it's a different kind of cake. Because it's the kind of cake that doesn't have anything in the center. No metal in the center. It's still got a strategic position in the center, but no metal, and more grass, because it's living and nice flowers. Actually, oh, it's not really flowers. It's probably supposed to look like flowers from a distance, but yeah, it's not actually flowers. Texture works pretty good, though. I don't think there's any SSMF though, which is a bit of a shame. There should be some specularity on the rocks, and there should be some normal maps just generally everywhere. But hey, that's still pretty good. Still kind of, it's still nice looking. I like it, and I like the fact that there's much more of an emphasis on the corners, less in the center. That's always good. Oh, is that what they did? According to the chat, apparently they rust shadows. Did they rust shadows? Huh. Interesting. Oops. Interesting. That... That sounds like a thing they might do. 
Mech spots look like sewer grates? I can't actually tell. Oh, ravens. Sorry, yeah, ravens. They're... They rushed ravens. Sorry, for those of you who are not familiar with the old, some of the older names in 0k units, yeah. Ravens, the bombers. The strategic bomb, well, strategic bombers, but the single target high bombers. I don't know. The non-napalm bombers. And yeah, Sackdoth, I believe, was the one who made this map. I mean, they basically based it off Deadlands, but they made it without the center mexes. It looks nice. I think it's going to play quite well. It might be a little small for what it is, though. We'll see. I don't think it works well for 2v2, though. I don't. I can see it working well for 1v1. Oh, it wasn't Sackdoth. Okay, I thought Sackdoth was in the thing. Okay, Orphelius is claiming that they could do a better job with reskin. I'd like to see it. Oh, Aeonios remastered it. Metzizo and Sackdoth built Deadlands. That's what it was. But it was Aeonios who actually did the remake... So that is interesting. Well, like I said, Orphelius, there's no SSMF. Orphelius is wondering if that was a dare when I said that they could do it. There's no SSMF, and apparently they can do a better reskin in 20 minutes. I'm curious. This is version 2.03, so apparently versioning is not a problem. Also, I'm curious. What do these look like? Oh, they do look kind of like... Actually, they look like coins, although they can kind of see the sewer gray thing. Anyway, that aside, I still think this map looks pretty good for what it is. Okay, so without SSMF, 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes and then SSMF on top of that would be great. That'd be wonderful. I think all maps should have SSMF because spring maps really don't look as good as they could without SSMF. That's the thing that exists to make them look as good as they possibly can. And that's what we want, isn't it? I mean, I do at least. Might as well make things look as good as they can. But anyway, the game itself is probably more interesting to most of you. So Cloaky Shield versus Cloaky Shield, and let's see. So Aquanim is going a bit less aggressive. Some dirtbag scouting. Dying Front and Kane, unsurprisingly, being very aggressive. Are they building workers? Okay. Dying Front's built a worker. Kane has not. Kane has actually been building entirely bandits and one dirtbag. And a nice Gremlin scout, so they know exactly what's going on. Oh, well, SMF, if you're not, don't do a mission map on grass. What are you thinking? You don't do a mission on grass. You do a light specular. Actually, maybe not light specular. That's if it's raining. Grass is, pr well, grass can be kind of specular from the right angle, but overall, it's fairly diffuse. A bit of specular is not bad, but yes. SSMF, or the shader format, basically just adds generally things like normal maps and, well, normal maps, mission maps, specular maps. Normal and specular are the two big ones. Pretty much every map could use at least a bit of normal and specular mapping somewhere. And it just makes it look nicer. It makes the sun play off of it more interestingly. I mean, the metal spots always could use it. It makes the map have appearance of more detail in the geometry of the normal maps. There are other maps as well, like emission mapping, which makes things bright, and parallax mapping, which is like normal mapping, but with better behavior when you're tilting at an angle. Or... Reflection mapping, which I've only seen used once, and that was in my case with iced coffee. But, yeah, it's not used for... It's used for newer maps, not so much for older maps. And there are a lot of older maps. Okay, parallax mapping is broken in spring, but whatever. Normal maps aren't that hard. Okay, normal mapping, what you do, you start with a bump map. Like, you just create a bump map for each texture, and then there's a plugin in GIMP that allows you to turn those into normal maps, which is pretty straightforward. And that's what you do. And then you have normal maps. And you just use the bump map on like a per material basis. And then you paint that, and then you have, or rather the normal maps on a per material basis. And you paint that essentially, and then you just build it from there. Okay, you don't want to do the mapping in GIMPs. But to create the materials, to create the normal map part of the material, using GIMP to make the, or, well, using a bump map, I guess. Yeah, using a bump map to make the normal map side of the material. Okay, whatever, let's get to the game itself. So Dying Front, their expansion is going down. It looks like Google Frog and Icon have not really expanded over to the eastern side of the map. But this, wow, very strong attack here. I think Dying Front and Kane are probably going to be pushed back. I mean, they've already taken the center. Just a blue team has already taken the center. 
Dimefriend and Kane are being heavily contained right now. Their early aggression didn't really pay off. And as a result, they're being pushed back heavily. Very heavily. And this, these set of bandits here, coming along the side, or sorry, Glaives, sorry, coming along the side, but nice flank on the bandits of Kane. This is not going to be working out too well. Google Frog, I think they can probably just push in once they start, okay, this warrior is disarmed. They can push in at their leisure. Oh, wait, there's an outlaw too. That needs to disarm too. The warrior was probably the biggest deal. And Dying Throwing, well... Actually, Dying Throwing lost the expansion. It looks like I could have not able to take it, so at least that's remaining contested. But still, this is... This is not going well for Akronim and Kane. And Scythe coming in. Nice job, Dying Throwing. Scythe coming in to get rid of Google Frog's commander. Not enough, though, sadly. Not quite enough. Three sides would have worked, but two sides was insufficient. Which means Google Frog's commander still has free reign. They can still go around here, build everything up. There are no workers here, just the commander. If the commander goes down, the entire area is basically only going to stand as long as nothing breaks it down. But with the commander, this area continues to get rebuilt. Although, admittedly, both commanders are up here. But if both commanders go down, then Dying Friend and Kane have a chance. If neither commander goes down, then Dying Friend and Kane are probably going to lose and will move on to game two, which is what they're planning on doing anyway. They were banking on a loss and choosing the next map. And then doing a Raven Rush. And then after that, I don't know, because then Google Frog and Aquanim would get map choice for game three if that happened, at which point I don't know what Dying Friend and Kane would do, because it'd probably be a larger, more economic focused map. Also, is CNET actually able to do normal mapping as part of the map, like, bumper normal mapping when in CNET without having to create the material definition beforehand? I haven't actually played with CNET much. I was under the impression that it still wasn't quite at the point where you could paint materials and have all the SSMF layers be affected. But if that's the case, then that's awesome. If, it, if that has been done, materials, material painting has been done, then that's wonderful. But it looks like the center is not completely solid. Okay, cool. So... We do have a bit of a match. We have a game. Or at least we might. I don't know. Google Frog and Actum still have a very strong position. Dying Fruin does have that one warrior in the center, but it's not doing much right now. And the hammers are doing quite a lot. I mean, they're pushing stuff back. A bit of hammer wars going on here, which is never really great. But hey, got rid of radar! Google Frog no longer has radar coverage over here, while Dying Friend and Kane do have radar coverage, so a slight advantage for them. And another scythe, but the, the commander was repaired. Mostly. Enough that a scythe is not enough. And moving along the side, we do see... Well, we see this Lotus coming up. That's basically death for this area. Defender's not enough. Google Frog able to take this out. Looks like Dying Friend and Kane, they're at half the economy. They have one shot to basically break everything down, and that'll be it. And that outline's there for a reason. That outline... Dancer pointing out the outline thing. Yeah, that outline's there for visibility purposes. The compre... Well, okay, first off, I think the outline looks better because it makes any graphical problems with the fact that it's not photorealistic graphics less obvious. And also, the outline... Oh, nice attack there. Kane taking out the center very effectively. But also the outline, the way H264 compression works, it tries to work out what objects are. Like, it tries to kind of work out, based on the colors, what the various objects are. And adding outlines makes it a lot easier for it to do its job. It's much better at figuring out what the units are, what the objects are, and is able to therefore better compress the video so it looks nicer for you. Rather than having a bunch of macro block issues because it doesn't know what are objects and what is background. So that is totally intentional. But also, yeah, visibility. It helps a lot. When I'm zoomed out like this, if I didn't have outlines, you wouldn't be able to tell the units from the ground at this zoom level. Anyway. Fix performance. I don't know if you can fix performance with this. This is not the cheapest effect. Like, outline isn't the cheapest effect. If you're worried about performance, it's not going to help you that much. If you're worried about... Because it allows you increase icon distances, and it allows you to have the low performance stage for longer of seeing models rather than 2D icons. Akronim's commander gone down. That's good, but a little bit late. Kane's commander is also heavily threatened. Two more shots from the looks of it. No, is it going to get out? I don't think it's going to get out. It's still in a very tight spot. But Dynefrin Zoits from... 
Dynfrin's Zeus from the back. <laughs> Same letter combination. Dynfrin's Zeus from the back coming in, taking out the rogues, which is actually very good for the Zeus, but very unusual. Still, Kane's commander is dead. And dead. There it is. This is still game for Google Frog and Aquanim. I don't know. I prefer... Like, Dynasty pointing out they prefer 2D icons. I prefer to have the units themselves, so I see where they're facing. Because they tend to play around this zoom level most of the time. Which means I can see where things are facing, but I still micro them. Whereas with icons, I have no idea where they're facing, no idea what's going on. But without icons, I get to see everything. And then with the outline and extra shader, I get to see everything clearly. And so do you, as you watch my stream. But yeah, this is game. I mean, Google Frog and Akinem had they kind of had it for most of the game. That one assault in the center was kind of nice, but it was a little bit late. If Google Frog had lost their commander to the scythes, we would have had a slightly more even game, as the defenses would have been harder to rebuild. Especially if Akinem's commander had soon gone down afterwards. Then it would have been a very even game. And at this point, yeah, Thunderbird's finishing everything off. And in comes the final assault as the Glaives tear apart the disarmed units, and from here it should be game. Yeah, that's game. Vote resign. Game one goes to Google Frog and Aquidim. Dying Friend and Kane are not gonna take this. The Google Frog and Aquidim take game one. We're moving on to game two, which is Dying Friend and Aquidim's strategy. Sorry, Dying Friend and Kane's strategy. Aquidim is probably not planning on this because they wanted to win. Dying Friend and Kane's strategy, pick a map, they can do a Raven Rush on and go for the Raven Rush. But yes, this map was fairly interesting. A lot of focus on the sides. The center was important, but not as important, I guess. I don't know. The sides felt like that's where a lot of the fighting was happening. The center didn't really come out too much until... Like, it, it mattered, but I think a large part of it was that Dying Friend and Kane didn't have much firepower to take care of the center. Anyhow, that is... Game 1, we're going to move on to Game 2, which is Dying Throne and Kane's choice of map. I don't know which map it's going to be, but it is going to be one of them. Because you cannot play without a map. Unless something changed in Engine 99 I don't know about, and they might just play on a completely blank surface where nothing happens. I'm not sure what's going on. But, yeah, we're going to have a map. It's going to be something. Whatever the map is. And apparently Ophelius is pointing out that my enunciation is absolutely horrible, which I know it is, especially since I've still kind of just woken up. Well, I haven't just woken up, but yeah. You have to have a map. You do not have... You you have a plate on a map? What is... My goodness, I'm going to sound drunk to everybody all the time when I'm doing... Whatever, game two, wherever it is. It's on Ravaged! Hooray! A better map for 2v2. Actually, it's probably what, why we're going to see it, because we're going to see the Raven drop most likely. I'm going to guess we're going to see Ravens. Because this is a map where you can do a safe air start. The Ravaged is what it is. Oh. <sighs> Oh, that's what the map is. So we're going to get to that as soon as the players get to it. There we go. Start game. And then once this is... If this goes... Well... Might go to game three. I don't know. The Raven drop might work. If not, then we're moving on to winner's finals with Google Frog Akronim versus Lori Clone for a rematch for Google Frog and Akronim to try to get their way back into that match. And possibly win. But first, they have to win against this. Sorry, not Raven Drop, what am I saying? <laughs> it's not a Raven Drop. It's just a Raven Rush. I don't know how you do a Raven Drop. That's not an option. Valkyries cannot pick up Ravens. Oh, that'd be kind of interesting if they could. Yep, there it is. There is the... There's the Air Factory. Cloaky bot for support, but I'm guessing that Google Frog and Akin are going to go for gunship. Like, Akin is probably going to go gunship, and Google Frog is probably going to go for one of Spider, Cloaky, or Jump. But then Akin is going to go for. Actually, no, Google Frog might go for the. Because we saw Google Frog before go for the Blastwing Rush, and they might go for the gunship. Go for the Blastwing Rush, spot out the Air Factory, see with that coming, and then go, oh, hey, Air Factory. Well, I can't allow that. And then kill it. No, Akinem's the one going for the gunships. 
Google Frog is going for Cloakie. Okay. So we have that sorted out. I'm guessing Akronim is going to go for the Blastwing attack around the side, because that's what you do on this map. Like, Blastwing rush on this map is a powerful strategy. That's kind of a thing you do. And the... Is the game about to start? Okay, so we're going to see... Flaves and Ravens. And Diamond and Kane starting out with what they're starting out with. We know what they're doing. Now, yes, Blastwing is exactly what's happening. This rush will fail. That is, the Raven rush will fail. The Raven drop is not going to work. At least I don't think it will. Blastwings are typically used... What typically happens with Blastwings is they go around the side. They go like this, and then they go here, and then they just smash up the area. That's how they tend to work. And that's exactly what's happening. The Raven, the Blastwings are, in fact, going down the side and up, and then going to smash everything up. Because that's how Blastwings work. That's how you do the Blastwings. The Ravens will probably be hit by the Blastwings and killed before they're able to actually do anything. Which... And are we seeing a Calm Drop? Not a Calm Nav, so we're seeing something. A Warrior Drop, maybe. Or possibly a Conjurer Drop just for the sake of expanding faster. And the Blastwings are coming in, and Aquanim and Google Frog are going to spot this out. This is going to be a problem. As Google Frog gets spotted... Oh, their commander gets scattered up, but who cares about that? Google Frog and Aquanim, do they know about this? They do now. They certainly do now, but they didn't... They did not attack the Ravens. Forcing Kane's hand, though. Kane forced to attack right now. Also forced to code Swifts because they realize, Oh crap, we have to deal with gunships. But yeah, this is going to be forcing their hand. They can still attack Metal Extraction. No, they're going for the Rapier instead. I'm going to bomb that out. Not going to do much good. I mean, it'll hit, yes, but it's not going to kill. 300 health left. And at this point, Kane and Dying Freund are in an extremely problematic situation. I mean, they can deal with the gunships as they're built, but they are now going to have to fight an even game from effective... Actually, no, an even position. Economically speaking, not much was lost in that because, I mean, we're dealing with Rush versus Rush. Blastwing Rush and Raven Rush. So ultimately, it was kind of a two-way rush. What is this Valkyrie carrying, though? That Valkyrie is carrying a worker. Yep, they're going for a fast expansion, just ramping their economy with that worker. And Swift coming in, forcing that back, scouting that out. But mostly forcing that back. So nice switching the Swifts there. Good job, Kane. Good choice. So getting rid of the Valkyrie. Is the contract going to go down? I don't think it's going to go down in any effective way. But that's not really a target. The target really should be the Rapier. Or leave. Leaving works too. So at this point, Kane and Dying Throne aren't that far behind. In fact, economically they are slightly ahead. Militarily they are a bit behind though. Although they are in a good position. But they can't really they can't really assault much. These these Swifts are only gonna do so much they can't kill the warriors. Although the Raven can. So that warrior is actually under some threat. If the Raven goes and attacks it, then that is going to kill... Yeah, the Raven is going for it. That warrior is basically... Oh, not quite dead yet. Almost, but no, going for the, ra the Rapier instead. And that is going to be a miss. And a death. Because the Trident. The warrior would have been a better option. But at this point, I'm curious. How, or feel like, how did you lose the, loser, the loose pre-finals game? Like, was it a Raven attack? Or Raven rush? Or was it something else? But at this point, Akronim and Google Frog are... <sighs> they are pretty safe. Like, they're pretty stabilized. Uh, they're high of the map. They're actually attacking. Oh, wow. That's, that is a wonderful harassment there. Some puppies are coming in to deal with it. But still, at least one Melee Extractor is going to go down. No, at least two. There's the second one. The Glaive runs away. Is it in time? I don't know. I think the puppies are faster. No, the puppy does get it. Okay, well, it's still got rid of two metal extractors. Not a terrible thing. But at this point, Diamond Friend and Kane are once again kind of in the corner. Oh, I see. So it was a moderator change, and they didn't counter it. All right, well, that's that sounds a lot less interesting than I thought it was, but oh well. My illusion was broken. You broke my sense of... of adventure, I guess? I don't know. I thought something super exciting happened. It sounded like it was just bad unit choice. Bad composition. That's rarely exciting. 
This composition's okay, though. I think... Okay, actually, well, I think the Rockers are not the best choice. The Warriors were what they were countering. The Glaives just popped up afterwards. That that was... That was a good switch by Goofrog. And then, at this point, how is Kane not going to go and respond to this? I don't see any response there. Building up... Oh, Warriors. Okay, that makes sense. There we go. That's the response. Warrior Rocco, but losing more and more Kami. Dying Prince Commander forced to jump into the water. The only way it could survive is to jump into the drink and hope for the best. But there is that water, and at least that does give it a safe spot. Looks like Google Frog is trying to catch the commander as it jumps out. Trying to figure out where it's going to end up, and they're aware of where it is. I mean, they can see it, I think. Yeah, I'm fairly certain they can see the gun above water. But at this point, Banshee's coming in. Oh no, Raper's coming in on the side here. Why am I hearing the Banshee attack? Ah, there it is. The Defender. Yeah, at this point, Google Frog and Akinem have the north side of the map. They're basically going to take the whole map at this point. So, Google Frog is... Probably... As soon as they stabilize... I mean, fall back to the Lotus, that's... Actually, the Lotus is going to go down. Google Frog's commander is in a bit of risk. Not much. No, never mind. Google Frog's commander is fine. The Lotuses are a bit at risk, but honestly, Google Frog and Aquanim are so far ahead. They have twice the economy. They have almost twice the military. This, and they have not quite the type counter. Well, they have basically the type counters. Yeah. The Warrior was out of position. The Rockos are going to be torn to shreds. Google Frog's micro is probably better than Dynfriend's, and that's basically game. Can't be reclaimed. That's strange. Well, anyway. Dying Frame might want to get the commander out of there in a safe spot. As... Oh, was that a drop? I... Well, he saw the drop in. And this drop should probably win the game. Kane's gonna lose this. I mean, hey, Google Frog and Akronon, they managed to get a drop off. They managed to make a drop work. Warrior... Uh, warrior Warrior this time rather than Warrior Zeus. Which is really a better drop option. Warrior Warrior is just a better drop. Deals more damage. I mean, yeah, it dies faster, but it deals a lot more damage. It's nicer. It's a better bomb. Oh! 18 health in that Kulkibot factory. Not as meaningful as the Heavy Tank factory back in that Quicksilver game in the Winner's Finals, but still. Painful, but honestly, not that relevant. I mean, Goofrog and Akadam are winning. So, I don't really see that being much of a threat. It's like, okay, sure, yeah, they... That was a bit of a pain, but they're winning. Hey, gotta point out, they are winning this match and go for a drop. Because, why not, I guess. Do Tridents have reload time? Oh, no, they don't have reload time. Yeah, I went for a drop time to try to close it out. Got rid of the jump bot factory, at least that helps a bit with the air. But this is probably going to be it. Blastwing coming in to take care of that factory, and the factory was not repaired in the meantime, but the Blastwings cannot get in. Too many Archangels. And by too many, I mean one. Because Archangels are really bloody powerful. <laughs> you gotta be careful about those things. They they will rip apart pretty much anything in the air that comes, well, within a thousand Elmos of them. We established that in the previous, in the Quicksilver match. Only one of these glaives gets in. There it goes. One of them got in, hit the factory once, killed it. Cloakybutt factory is dead. And Kane and Dying Friend are out, and Kane's being a really good sport about it. Apparently, they've had the most fun ever. I mean, hey, they got third. Good job. You got third place. So I'm guessing that either Kane's going to go to bed, or they're going to want to co-commentate for the finals, and I wouldn't mind having co-commentary on the finals. So that was that. Not really sure that Kane and Dynford ever had much of a chance. They had the Raven, and the Raven drop was scouted out so early on. And if they had gone for metal extractors, maybe? But at that point, I don't know. Once it got spotted, they already kind of lost their momentum. That was a huge blow. And afterwards, just Google Frog and Aquanim expanded much faster. So yeah, that is... that's it. So moving on to Grand Finals. Which is starting on Vitra. Although I'm going to have some water and possibly pull in Kane. Not sure. But we'll see. I will be back in just a moment, so stay tuned. <laughs> 